Now I'm on four or five, William. But that's, I think that's where we were last time. We need four, five, four, six. Six, four, seven. Yeah. I, mean, I think we stopped there. We went through four, eight. I thought we hammered through into four, nine. Or yeah, four, nine. Four, nine. Yeah, four, nine. 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 Four, dash Four, dash nine. We did have a lot of those. Yeah, I said that because I had a note that. Yeah, we need to finish one. Yeah, I just had a comment about the fire. All right, so we started at the top at the bottom standards. I think we beat that to death the last time. That's going to be reworded a little bit. Well, there is the thing about the minimum separation of 12 feet between all enclosed structures, and then if they're more than 15 feet apart, they've got to have fire stuff. Has that been taken out? No, that was my question. That was my question. Okay, John. Fire code issue. And that's what I was just trying to understand. Is that is that something that's being forced by code, or is that something we put in because we got that? We have in, in four in ID. There will be a minimum separation of 12 feet between all enclosed structures and under fire protection. If it says if it's within 15 feet of another building, it's got to go um, sprinklers, right? Is it sprinklers or? Pump and tank system. Do you have any idea what that means? So this provision about fire protection comes out of the FDA and through the C requirements and standards that fire chief was designating. So and this is talking about specifically cluster type development where you'll have the houses built closer together on smaller size lots. So I'm assuming I mean, I'm okay I'm assuming, I'm assuming that's where it came from. I haven't verified, but I'm assuming that's can, can you just verify it please at some point? Or should you talk to Chris Johnson to ask him? Uh, okay, uh, at, the, at the bottom of that page, we have this incomplete streets practice from the Green Grove Toolbox and Site Design. What is that? Yeah, good question. And where are you at? Complete streets. Area of page 495. Four nine, four nine. Uh, the last two oh. sentences. And there's a wheel shell that yep. needs to be able to fix. In the end, so it's like yeah, I got the yeah. 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 remove the this new wheel. Do you see it for mm -hmm. second? Let's take one at a time. All right. But where is the one about the um, last, last sentence on the page? Green growth toolbox inside the sun. I actually don't know what it was, and if we're referring to it, we, 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 we should probably know. Uh, so, complete streets is a policy for making sure that streets and other assets are for all users, not just cars. Uh, so that's what the complete streets idea is, and the streetscape or those type of uh, facilities are designed such a way to welcome all users. And the Green Toolbox is uh, another set of tools and devices all put together in one spot to help manage um, open space, landscaping, uh, water and repairage, and things like that. And it's this whole other set of like 500 pages worth of ideas, trips, takes, and best management practices to achieve those standards. So are we put it says there'll be an appendix. Do they need that in the appendix? Well, uh, I don't know. I hadn't thought about that. This is all stuff that got done before I got here. And right now, they're not as appendixes. Sure, just make a reference. Stay. We can make a reference to it as long as we say that. I think, yeah, I think that's why we're yeah. making yeah. appendix. Yeah. Or just take it out. Well, I don't think you want to do that. I mean, does anybody have to not look at them? God, we have, if we put it in there, do we have to read it? It'd be nice to know the basic concepts well, behind the, the basic yeah. concepts yeah. behind. That's the something robots. we can go over, like uh, in a meeting down the road. And we can mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Down the road, like next year, something. Yeah, sure. Yeah. 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 Well, I'm being fourteenth. February fourteenth. Thank you. You got maybe don't. Say it's going to be in the appendix if we're not. Going to we're going to take it out. Yeah, he's just going to make it. Just take it out for now. No, it's going to make. Chris, did you get the get the wheel show on the second line of that? I got it. Okay. Yeah, it's just going to be we're going to take the appendix out. We're going on to page ten. Oh, okay. Oh, I see. Okay. Page ten. Okay. Page ten. Okay. Page 10. Page 10. Page 10 at the end. B two. Instead of critical watershed, should be watershed critical. 
Okay. That's in. in okay. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, I see the first Okay. All right. Four tangle once. Twice. Four done. And C, it says a mix of incentives. And I say remove the mix of incentives. Overlays areas is to protect the scenic value of the view corridors through development standards for building architecture and just remove the mix of incentives. We're, we're not saying that incentives are going to be included in anything. You see that Chris got seven lines down there, see? Yeah. I'm just not sure. Yeah, we aren't. There are actually not very many incentives, mainly just handbooks. I'm going to email you all the Yeah, I just wanted to go. I thought we were going to go through them all night, so I wanted to clear up anything. Okay. Um, and C, just one actually. Yeah, it's got a thousand dollar incentive. Yeah, it's got a thousand dollar buffers. Yeah, we've got to talk about the buffers. Yeah, let's yeah. talk about the buffers. You see, it, currently, uh, the 220 and the 150 scenic corridors have 1,500 foot buffers. I don't know if there was a discussion had about reducing the buffers or not. And also, I want to say that. Some of this stuff, I don't know who the author of it is. I don't know if this goes back to uh, Mr. Harbeck, if this is Terry's work, if this is several different planners who have worked on this along the way. I think large yes. part of this comes from Harbeck, and that's where we get the formatting and color and a lot of this stuff. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to put that out for now. The corridors, the two that we have in existence, are 1,500 foot buffers. From They're currently 1,500 feet. So I think that's, which wait, which two are those? 220, 220 and 573? And 150 or 150. So my feeling is that they should stay the same. I agree. Okay. okay. That's so. And what did you say they currently are? 1,500. 15. 15. So, so we'd have to change all the ones where it says 1,000 to 1,500. That's Chris has to do that. Right. Yeah, that's that's it. Okay. It works for me. And then right. now for what about the I-73? I-73, I think we should make it the same. And the text I changed, now, that kind of That makes it easy, right? So yes. we would all look at it. Consistency. And what about the NC 150? That stays 500? It's 1500. That's 1500. That's 1500. NC 150? Is that what you're saying? The 150? Yeah, yeah. it says 500 here. Yeah, I know, it's wrong. It's, it's oh, yes, so you're going to change it. Okay, we're going to go to 1500. Okay, it's 1500. It's a long word. Yeah, it's Okay, moving on. It works for me. I got a question on the building materials. It says that this section does not apply to single family yeah. to family homes. Mm -hmm. And so that means if you have a two family home or a single family in that scenic corridor, you could do whatever you want. Yeah, it gets really tricky to say so it's materials, materials right? describing exactly what people are going to do in their own personal properties, private properties. Yeah. These are generally more uh, targeted towards commercial uses yeah. and things like that. Yeah. We I, you know, will talk with somebody if maybe they come up with some postmodern design. I'm like, I don't know if that really fits. Is this correct for your heart set? I'll talk with people, but uh, what was me to try to force them? We would be the, the, uh, the one on the Sandy Health is sort of not traditional, but it's... No, it's definitely modern design, like the one over on Straighter Road. Yes, yeah, yeah. 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 And so, it, but, but, but that's personal preference and personal desire. Yeah, yeah, as long as any yeah. high requirements and are within mm -hmm. the standards for the lot coverage yeah. and setbacks. And what about two family though? Is two family, is that the same, same governance as single family? Yeah. Because if you're building duplexes, that's a little different. Well, uh, well, <coughs> we we talked with somebody the other day, they can build quadplexes that look like a house that any of you may live in and you wouldn't realize yeah. necessarily that there's four different separate um, living quarters, living units. I think you mentioned that as well. So what? Yeah. But I think yeah. for duplexes, it's still fine. No, just curious. Yes. Okay. Going once on 11, twice, 12. I have a general question about 11 and 12. If, if, once these, if these are adopted or if they're already 1,500, why wouldn't this come into effect with the property over here? It seems like some of the stuff that they did in the original site plan didn't follow the scenic corridor rules. Uh, well, there's an existing scenic corridor, and so far they've submitted you know, this master development plan concept plan. They've not gone far into the details other than say there's going to be some out parcels, you know, this kind of stores, some of these type of stores, office buildings. 
they're not really coming with like the re, you know, like they're legit, straight, 100% completed design, and, and when that is submitted and looked at, we'll review it through these standards, which includes, you know, breaking up the long expanses of um, building facades, uh, having elevation changes, and like, sure. things like that. So, and with these zone changes and everything that's gone with that, it's not relevant to this conversation right now, but they're they're covered under the existing development. So, so they reach with their site plan. So any changes, then... Um, <coughs> this is adopted, this will apply to their new site plan. For architectural stuff, but I mean, the, the ordinance that was in force when those current zone changes occurred is the one that applies out there. Okay, on, uh, on 12. Um, yeah, I'll press on. I, I, I wasn't worried about it. Well, I, I think the uh, fourth, fifth line down requires to be removed. Encourage. Is encourage required? Oh, yeah, why not? I, I, oh, said, I, I said remove and encourage. <clears throat> I'm sorry, Dick, where are you at? Uh, about the six, fifth, fifth, sixth line down in three. At the top of the page. I don't know. Required. So, um, so. I said remove and encourage. You're saying remove or require? One or the other. Well, so encouraged required. is not going to get it. No. Required, it will get it. Right. Anything on the parking lot? So it's at the edge of that 400 feet begins the bottom of the field. Yeah. Right. So, so it's really... So it'd be from the end of that right away, from the other way outside of there. The right away is essentially their property. Yeah. Okay. We got control. Yeah. Any other comments, questions? On 12. Once. Twice. 13. So for the Summerfield Road District, mm -hmm. we talked about some kind of public comment, some kind of public meeting for that? Are we doing something for that? Hold on. The, the town council, once we give this to them, they have to have public meetings. There'll be two public meetings. <coughs> public meetings. We don't have one. We have one. So we're going to put we it have in one? the overall. Well, it's up to town council, but I think that they will ask us to hold one. Okay. 
Yeah, it's like a same process as a um, zone change or a text amendment. Uh, it's like, you know, except for in this instance, we're adopting a, a total zoning ordinance instead of just a. Yeah, we're a long ways away from public hearing. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, so there'll be time for that. Now, this section here, which you might see as you flip through it, because I took what already existed and what we had currently. This part right here, and this is because I wasn't exactly sure which way we were going to go with the discussion of the 1,200 foot buffer um, west of Summerfield Road. And Dick and I had a few conversations about that when I had written it. By the time we talked about it, I created a, like a separate, I included it. Okay, two things. First of all, since the Summerfield Road District was written and included in here, I assume that there was a discussion about renaming Town 4 District to Summerfield Road District. That's not, that could be wrong, but I didn't hear anything back. <coughs> Um, so when you see now in this report where it says Summerfield Road District, that's really the town court district that we have. So we have mixed use and residential. Um, and if you look at the residential section and describing what that bounds is, it'll be explained that the west boundary is 1,200 foot buffer west of that. So that's another thing to be mindful of when we're looking at this and talking about some of the agenda that possible name change. If y'all want to leave the name as it is, town court district, uh, and then the mixed use and the residential, and then create a separate overlay for that buffer zone that you guys have previously discussed and agreed to. That's y'all's you know, um, preference. I just wanted to make sure everybody likes well, that. Quick question on the one right above that. Okay. Fine. Specifically the sidewalks. I know that's a topic of our firm. Yeah. Do we want to strongly request that any new commercial or any other Can we do that? Yeah, you mean in the entire town or just uh, <coughs> some of you? No, anywhere, period. Yeah. I, think it, I think it would be a you mistake can require to require it. Why? Yeah. Uh, you might just require some new subdivisions. Or That's what I'm saying. New development. Yeah. Um, you got to start somewhere with sidewalks. And some there's not a lot of Right. Yeah. So what you'll see and you'll hear about is somebody might say, well, driving down the road and I see a 100-foot section of sidewalk and there's another sidewalk. Correct. And I say, well, I understand that, but the idea is, we have some in place, and at some point in the future, it will be. If I it mean, seems reasonable, it's looking like, like a government man. The downside is the right. I love it. <laughs> yeah, so. I just thought here's an opportunity. You can't require the whole. You can't require the future. future. Yes, you you can Jeff, we got to look into the future. And one of that well, if, if, if just we right now, there will be a future connection, and that creates a strong network. You run for office in the government. If we want to look at if we want to look at a new subdivision, I guess the question is if we want to require. We want to seriously want to require sidewalks or require sidewalk easements at the very minimum. Do we want it on both sides of the street or one side of the street? I, I think a lot of it really kind of does depend on trying to set up some kind of concept of a network. Like where are you trying to get them and along what kind of streets? Yeah. Like maybe in the residential locals it'd be nice, but are we going to require it? I don't know. But along like major thoroughfares and pedestrian routes, especially if you start putting commercial areas where people will be walking from their yeah. place and they want to walk there, then they need a good path. And so uh, I think it would be hard to say everywhere sidewalk is required, but in certain places, I mean, they, I, I wouldn't just say encouraged, but it does need to kind of be identified where it is required and where it's encouraged. <coughs> what, about, what about requiring it in the scenic districts? So that's where you want people out and about because it's scenic. Uh, a lot of those scenic areas, though, are, um, yeah, they're highways. Along well, uh, I-73, never no, I, 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 I got that one. 220? But, well, one, but, but 150, 150 in Summerfield Road, you could easily go. One, one, yeah, yeah. Could have it. And some of the one of the fifty in Summerville Road, we definitely have it. And of course, we have, we have part of it anyway with the, uh, the, the tunnel being opened up. Correct. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I'm actually going to point out. I would go to 